Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about Venus and specifically we're going to talk about various mysteries of this beautiful planet, things that we still don't really understand or are not sure how they actually happen because my mysteries of Venus are quite uh, diverse and there's quite a lot of them that we still haven't uh, really been able to explain. We're also going to talk about possible explanations to those uh, mysterious occurrences on this beautiful planet and of course maybe even talk about the possibility of one day uh, colonizing this beautiful planet. Welcome to What The Math. Now Venus might be named after the Roman goddess of love, uh, but this is not a planet that I would consider to be very lovely. If you have never heard of what is happening on Venus, the temperature here is a little bit too hot. It's uh, currently 463 degrees Celsius with uh, chances of acidic rain and the pressure of about 91 atmospheres, which is basically the same pressure as at a depth of about one kilometer um, in the ocean. Basically here you would get squeezed, you would get burned, and then you would also get burned by the acid as well. But from what we've learned so far about this planet is that it's not something that was always like this. As a matter of fact, um, all of this extreme condition was caused by uh, something called the runaway greenhouse effect that may actually even affect our planet Earth one day if we're not too careful. So Venus is a pretty interesting planet to study because this might be actually the future of our own planet Earth. And so this so-called climate change that occurred here um, something like uh, several billion years ago was very likely, or at least that's what we think so far, was very likely caused by the fact that Venus actually um, used to have a lot of wa liquid water on the surface, but then all of this liquid water disappeared. And as the liquid water disappeared, the um, so-called plate tectonics stopped moving around and basically caused this planet to overheat and release a lot of carbon. But that's, that's of course just one theory. But I guess what uh, the mystery here is, is that, you know, what happened to that water? Was it actually destroyed by the solar radiation because it's so close to the sun? Was it destroyed by something completely different? And um, whatever happened to, to Venus back then, um, actually is something that might one day happen to Earth. So we have to actually try to study it and try to learn what exactly happened here because we, we would actually want to avoid this on our own planet. But basically this uh, mechanism that turned this from a very, very Earth-like planet to what we know today as Venus is, of course, one of the biggest mysteries um, of this planet. So we're not really sure why it has such an extreme climate today and why um, it's so different from Earth, even though in the beginning they were very, very, very similar. The second mystery here is actually um, related to the atmosphere. So Venus, if you look at it, it doesn't spin very fast. As a matter of fact, the rotation here is very, 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 very slow. And so it takes Venus about 243 days to spin just once around its own axis, which makes it um, way, way slower than any other object, or at least any other planet in our solar system. And for Earth, of course, this is only 24 hours, so uh, Venus spins about uh, 243 times slower than our own planet Earth. Now, why exactly is this happening? We're not really sure. But we think, or at least that's the best theory that we have so far, is that um, it w used to spin much faster. As a matter of fact, uh, we think it may have actually been spinning as fast as Earth. But because of the runaway uh, greenhouse effect, because it basically started to acquire a lot of atmosphere, all of this thick atmosphere over time, over billions of years, essentially started to... Um, slow down planet Venus. It started to slow down its um, rotational period and um, after something like a billion or two billion or three billion years it eventually became 243 days that it is today. So the th super thick atmosphere even seems to have slowed down the rotation of this planet. But what's even more interesting is the mystery number three here. The super, super fast um, speed uh, of the actual atmosphere. So even though the planet itself doesn't spin very fast, the atmosphere here does move around the planet very, very fast. As a matter of fact, uh, Venusian clouds usually move at a speed of about 220 miles per hour or about 360 kilometers per hour or something like 60 times faster than the actual rotation of the planet. And even though we don't really have any good explanation for why it's happening, the only explanation we currently have is that it's probably somehow related to the fact that um, Venus is relatively close to the sun, it's receiving a lot of uh, sun energy, 
and this energy probably makes the atmosphere spin a little bit faster than it should. But other than this really simple explanation, we don't actually have any, any idea of why the atmosphere of Venus spins so, so fast, so much faster than the actual rotation of the planet. Now, the fourth mystery is uh, once again re related to rotation, but this time it's the actual uh, direction of the spin. So as you can see, Venus is currently spinning this way. The thing is, it's actually the opposite of every other object. So if I look at Earth, you'll see that it spins that way. Uh, it's spinning sort of counterclockwise here. Um, basically, pretty much almost every object in our solar system spins counterclockwise in a direction of its orbit. Whereas Venus does it in retrograde rotation. It's actually going against the flow. It's basically a, a rebel moving in the completely opposite direction. Now, we're not really sure why this is happening, but I guess the only explanation that we currently have is that one day sometime a long, long time ago, when Earth received a collision uh, that created the moon, Venus also received a collision that somehow changed its rotation. I totally just missed. Let's try it again. And here we go. Let's try to collide Mars and see if we can change the rotation. So as you can, as you can see, a collision of a very large magnitude would be able to change the rotation. But in this case, it probably hit Venus uh, somewhere on the side right here, so that the actual rotation became uh, in the opposite direction. And I guess that's the only explanation we currently have for why it spins in a different direction from everything else. But maybe it happened in some, some kind of a different uh, way that we can't really understand just yet. And the next mystery is once again related to the atmosphere, but this time it's actually related to something in the upper atmosphere of Venus. And um, here it's kind of difficult to demonstrate because we don't really have um, the ultraviolet image of this um, planet in Universe Sandbox. But uh, if I were to basically take an ultraviolet picture of Venus, this is what I would see. It would actually look uh, very patchy. And we don't really know why. Something is actually absorbing the ultraviolet light in the upper atmosphere at an um, altitude of about 30 to 50 kilometers. And um, there's so many theories about what's, what's causing this. Some people think it's possibly um, some sort of a bacteria. The, the people actually think that there might be um, life in the upper atmosphere that sort of um, moves around the clouds and sort of lives there. And this would be a very Earth-like condition as well, because in the upper atmosphere, the pressure and temperature is very, very close to that on Earth. But if there is life absorbing the UV light, uh, there's obviously going to be a lot more questions that need to be answered. However, there's also other explanations. Uh, one of the best explanations so far for what is absorbing um, the UV light in the upper atmosphere um, is actually based on the study from 2016 that discovered that um, there's a compound that Venus has called... Um, ferric chloride or FeCl3. This fluoride is also, uh, this compound is actually known for absorbing UV light and um, if it is present in large amounts in the um, Venusian atmosphere, it might actually absorb uh, the UV light as well. And obviously this explanation is not as fun as bacteria flying around, but it might be the most scientifically accurate right now. Because other than some kind of a compound absorbing the UV light, um, or possible bacteria flying in the atmosphere, we don't really have any other explanation for what's actually happening here. But of course, the idea of having life in the upper atmosphere of Venus is quite a possibility. Basically, we have a lot of this type of life on our own planet Earth. We call them extremophiles. These are bacteria that can survive acid, they can survive hot temperatures, they can survive hot, uh, very high pressures, um, and they can definitely live everywhere on Earth. And why not Venus? Why wouldn't life be able to live there? Well, this is something that we want to discover one day, and it's probably the biggest mystery um, on Venus on Venus right now, and it's something that we would really, really like to figure out sometime soon. And I guess these are basically the biggest mysteries of this beautiful planet Venus, uh, but there's actually one mystery that I wanted to mention that we were able to finally solve. The mystery was about uh, how is it that Venus has no magnetosphere, but has such a thick atmosphere. And to basically answer that, scientists studied the upper atmosphere of Venus um, using various uh, probes that were sent there, and they've discovered that, well, there's actually some kind of a ionosphere um, 
or basically a magnetic uh, or electromagnetic layer that's formed right on top here on the surface of uh, the atmosphere by the interaction with various um, solar radiation particles. Basically, as the solar winds come to Venus, they uh, interact with the upper atmosphere and they create this kind of a protective shield um, that pr protects most of the atmosphere on Venus, but it doesn't protect everything. So Venus actually does lose quite a lot of material um, every second, as a matter of fact. And if you go under um, the mass loss right here, you'll see that it actually loses quite a lot of mass per second. Um, and so uh, even though it does lose atmosphere, it doesn't lose as much as it could be losing if it didn't have this protective ionosphere uh, layer. And so once we solve this mystery, uh, we realize that, well, Venus does seem to have a bit of a protection from solar radiation um, that's basically created by the atmosphere itself. And this is something that might actually even happen on Earth if ever our magnetosphere disappears. So it will actually protect our planet just a little bit from the solar radiation, but not for a very long time. Over time, however, Venus is actually going to lose quite a lot of its atmosphere and in the next few billion years, its atmospheric pressure is actually going to decrease um, lower and lower and lower until one, maybe one day it will actually become Earth-like as well and might be colonizable for us uh, as a species. But for now though, it's not a very, very nice world. It's too hot, too dangerous and way too acidic and we're definitely not going to be able to settle here until we find a way to actually have a colony that sort of floats in the upper atmosphere. Oh, and by the way, that's totally possible, and I've talked about this previously. If we were to actually send a ship here that's filled with normal air, basically nit nitrogen and oxygen, it would actually just float on the surface of the atmosphere, and we would be able to live there. And that's because Venusian atmosphere is mostly made up of carbon dioxide, which is actually heavier than oxygen and nitrogen. So it would be a similar effect to how helium balloons float on our planet Earth. So this would be like a, basically a helium balloon base, but it would just be filled with oxygen and nitrogen, and it would actually be just floating around the upper cloud area, kind of similar to the cloud city from uh, Star Wars. But anyway, we'll talk about more of this in some other future video, but for now, that's all I wanted to say about the mysteries of Venus, and hopefully you learned something from this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys uh, watching educational videos using video games, and of course, uh, leave a comment below telling me, do you know of any other mysteries I haven't mentioned on, uh, about Venus or about other beautiful planets in our um, solar system? And we'll talk about this in some of the future videos. And for now, let's just cause a little bit of collision on Venus and change its face forever. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later, and as always, bye-bye.